Matt crawled to freedom through half a yard of the most foul-smelling foulness I can't even imagine. Or maybe I just don't want to. Half a yard. That's almost the length of two footballs. All to avoid paying someone else to do an easy but messy job. Transmission cooler lines play a vital part in, well, managing transmission temperature. Like most things I'm coming to realize in the discovery, it's not a very demanding job in the way of expertise or tools. It's just going to take a willingness to want to put in some hard work and maybe get a little dirty in that most awful smelling of automotive fluids, ATF. This job can get pretty messy and gross if you aren't careful. For anything that involves working on the business end of one of these old rigs, I definitely recommend getting a set of coveralls. I keep a set in all of our rigs. That way I know no matter what happens, no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm wearing, I've got something to put on so I don't mess up my clothes when I'm getting underneath these rigs. Aside from that, you're gonna need a five or a six millimeter hex drive to take out the drain plug, eight and 10 millimeter sockets, a 36 millimeter fan wrench, a set of needle nose pliers, two drain pans, a small funnel, and a couple of medium sized crescent wrenches. Oh, and don't forget automotive transmission fluid. The Rave manual calls for Dexron 2D, an out of date formulation. Now all Dexron fluids are supposed to be backwards compatible, but we're using Dexron 3 because it's closer to the 2D formula and a heck of a lot cheaper. You're gonna need about eight quarts to make this happen. The cooler lines themselves are ones we ordered from Atlantic British. The internal product number for the kit is 9355B, and at the time we purchased it, it retailed for $199.99. You can find links to all the tools, fluids, and parts in the description below. Before you start this job, there are some safety considerations we should address. Let the vehicle cool down before you start this process. You're going to have to be reaching around your exhaust lines and catalytic converters and you don't want to get burned. Make sure the vehicle is parked on a flat surface with a parking brake set and it wouldn't hurt to chalk the wheels. Disconnect the battery and put the key in your pocket before you crawl under the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and use a 6mm hex to drain out this plug right here you can see it but it's this plug and it is on the bottom of the transmission pan I'm gonna get a drain plug pan over here underneath it to catch the mess that's step one So that's pretty much drained out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw back in just to kind of keep this from raining on me the rest of the time I'm down here. This is really dumb to do this over the drip pan. It's usually a surefire way to get the plug sunk into the bottom of the drip pan. But for right now, we're just gonna do that. Give it a little snuggy up there. Okay, so here's where things got interesting with the next step, disconnecting the lines from the transmission. You're gonna wanna keep the drain pan out of the transmission as these lines are gonna wanna drain back from the radiator. Use a crescent wrench to disconnect the bottom hose first and use a drip pan below it so you can capture any of that drainage that's gonna come out of that hole and or the hose. The next step is probably the worst of the whole process. You're gonna have to disconnect that top transmission line. I know it looks like it's really tough to get at, and it is, but I was able to do it without disconnecting the cross member or taking off the catalytic converter. Once you get it disconnected, just bring it down and set it next to the one you already disconnected at the drain pan, and continue on. Okay, so I got the back half of the lines out, got them drained, disconnected. Now I'm gonna start working on zipping my way down the length of these lines to the front, disconnecting the brackets that are attached to it. Um, so far I've only seen two. If I come up with more, I will let you know. Looks like they're a 10 millimeter bolt to get them out and then we should be able to get our way to the front, disconnect up front and start reattaching up there. After you get all the brackets off, it's time to move to the front. Set your drip pan down under the front right of the vehicle underneath the front right oil cooler connection. I've heard people say that you need to take the grill apart to get this cooler line out, but I'm thinking that's not the case. I think I may have just found a little loophole. You see, if you look right in there, you'll see the nut that we're after.
you'll also see that you can capture it right here with a crescent and spin it free just right through that hole next connect the new line back in there and route it back towards the back to the transmission but leave it disconnected as you're going to want to have a little bit of space when you go to reconnect the other line later for the purposes of better filming and to accommodate my oversized american arms I went ahead and removed the fan and the fan shroud so that we could get at those front connections a little bit easier. The only tools you're gonna need for this process is the 36 millimeter fan wrench and some needle nose pliers. Basically, you take the fan off like you would normally would at any other time. Then pull the two tabs off the front of the radiator shroud with a set of needle nose pliers. You'll be able to slide the shroud right out after that. Once that's done, pull the temperature sensor off of the line going into the bottom of the radiator and disconnect it. Go ahead and disconnect and remove that line and replace it with the new one. But I will caution you, go ahead and connect it to the transmission end first before you connect it to the radiator end. It made it quite a lot easier having a little bit of flex and play in the hose for me to go ahead and get it reconnected when I was underneath there. You can reconnect the lower line to the transmission once this is all complete. Then go ahead and connect those two lines back into their mounting brackets. Finally, remove that line that goes between the top of the radiator to the transmission cooler. I didn't have to take any body panels or anything else out when I did this. I just simply unbolted it at both ends and pulled it down and took the new one and brought it in from the bottom to the top. Once you're done with that, slide the fan shroud back in, put the fan on, button it all up and get ready. So use the funnel to fill the transmission back up with ATF at the dipstick tube. Check the level as you're filling it up on the dipstick after about every quarter or so. When you get about halfway into it, it's going to show inside of the normal operating area. Now you're going to have to go back to the cab. You're going to start the car and with your foot on the brake, you're going to cycle through all of the gears in the transmission and then put it back into neutral. At that point, you're going to set the parking brake. You're going to continue to fill automatic transmission fluid in through the dipstick, filling it up. You're going to get it in between the range on the dipstick, the normal fill range, and you're going to be done. And it should be right at about eight quarts. Once that's done, go ahead and get cleaned up and head for Mexico. Hopefully in a couple years, your best friend gets paroled and meets you on the beach in Cihuataneo and you can get some tropical drinks while you tell him all about how being a Land Rover owner makes you feel more like a plumber than a mechanic. Check out our new Instagram page, Secondhand Overland. Tag us in your next post with your rig and if we like it, we'll feature it. Till next time, be good.